Oh, now the messy part. With a messy situation on our hands and land. I've been working hard today, guys. In today's episode, we cut back the weeds and make new solutions and terraces to help reshape our little slice of paradise so that it can stand the test of time. And the test of the seed blower? <laughs> Welcome back to our channel. If you're new around here, we're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married, moved into a van, and have been chasing adventures all around the globe ever since. And now, after moving from the USA to Portugal, we'll be documenting our entire journey of building our dreams as we transform a historic water mill into our first home, not on wheels. Join us as we embark on this new and exciting phase of life. Now, Let's take in a deep breath and let it out. Let the adventure begin. Welcome back to another episode, guys. Today, we are gonna be cleaning and retaking back our land. The vegetation, the weeds, all the viney things, they're just getting too much. And my inner lawn boy is about to come out. I used to mow lawns as a kid in the Midwest, and I'm just ready to like clean this place up, make it look fresh, regenerate the soil, allowing all this stuff to get mulched up and become a new layer. Plus, I love the smell of cut grass. Let's get to it. You can barely even see the lagoon in there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, we need a nice clean path right through here, down our waterway. Allow the water to flow better. Along with trimming the weeds back, allowing the water in our stream to flow better during these magically water-rich months, something else we had to work on was this. This situation caused by the flow of rainwater that gets channeled through our gutter and tubes. I mean, pipes. I mean, culverts. Or whatever you'd like to call this awesome water slide system that we have traveling all the way from the top of our road down to the bottom of our valley. Ending up here. Holy smokes. Leaving our tirelessly graveled, most maintained, and most usable terrace with a muddy pile of leaf and rock debris right on top like a cherry, except a lot messier. So actually it's more like the hot fudge. Or at least, how about a madronio, since we're here in the south of Portugal. Oh, shoot. Ooh, there's a nice set up there. Ooh, I think I might need a ladder. Okay, on my tippy toes. There's my bounty. Look how nice that is. Hey, editor. Hey, babes. Oh, the best, the best snacks. And you guys who have asked what these taste like, basically they're like little hard shells that get softer as the fruit ripens. And inside they're like cherry-like tomatoes. <laughs> they're not sweet though, they're mm. very mild. They're just right. Wow. We've always wondered why they don't sell these locally here at the store, but I think it's because they don't stay long. They're so fragile. I put one in my pocket once. That was a mess. Bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that we've had our daily dose of vitamin C, let's get back to finding a solution for this situation. Who better to help us than the mini digger operator extraordinaire himself, our amigo and land hero, Nelson, here to save the day. <laughs> and Jose too, of course, who has been a key part of many of our successful projects here on the land thus far. Good work, my friend. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Really, Nelson just did all the work. <laughs> Guys, we're back at it today. We just had a huge delivery of five more of those huge pipes, those tubes that we installed in the springtime. These are the 60 centimeter in diameter tubes, which are massive. We wanted to protect the mill ultimately, so that way the house doesn't get damaged by any of the runoff drainage of water. So we're gonna be digging a canal installing these across Terrace 2 and getting the water from the top of the mountain that's coming down the drainage, the canals we created, and get it back over to the river at the bottom of our land without going near our precious Moinho. Let's do this. Well done. <laughs> this is our cavity we're digging to be able to clear out a spot on the terrace that will allow all the pipes to go underneath right here, connecting the upper drainage system to this. Thank you. 
Look at him just ripping through that rock wall. Like, that terrace is filled with rock right now. It's pretty amazing to be here firsthand watching this happen. We did contemplate, should we run seven more tubes underneath this terrace one that I'm standing on? And the conclusion was no, because we want to use this terrace for a garden, a natural pool. Right now, he's just going to dig a canal around the little perimeter, the corner over there, to let the rest of the water drain back around. Right now, it's tube time. Now this is a job I feel like I have a little experience doing. Perfecto. Nice work. Asima. Oh, now the messy part. Hello, guys. We're hanging out in the tube together. Now I gotta go back up the incline. Nelson's gonna wonder what we're up to down here. <laughs> <laughs> Mi amigos. <laughs> tu ferramenta de trabajo. Sí, He's saying that this is my tool of choice. Yes, we love making videos. <laughs> okay. Time for material. We actually only end up using four of the tubes. It's time to put all the terrain back on top. The nouveau challenge. <laughs> Nelson and I just realized that this is quite a difficult challenge trying to put these rocks back in place to form the terrace. These rocks are big, they're heavy. We've been using the machine partially to move them, but it is not an easy task. I'll tell you that much. <sighs> Take a look at our completed wall here. We were getting a little frustrated at the connection of the rocks because the base just was really difficult to form. But once we got in the flow, things moved pretty rapidly and easy. And Nelson and I both agreed we can now make walls. Not perfect, they got some weird curves in them, but we're thrilled that we did it. Now it's just time to fill in the backside. Careful, don't knock over the wall. <laughs> By far the most challenging part was trying to hold on to the slippery rocks and find the right ones. It felt like we were playing a huge game of Tetris. And then Terrace 2 with its new underground tube system was finally ready for the final touch, gravel. But there was still a gap to mind. The crucial 50 meter fire protection gap or space between our water mill and those notoriously flammable, invasive, and self-propagating eucalyptus trees. Can you believe those are the eucalyptus that I cut in the springtime? And then, in the midst of cutting back the new sprouts, Drew's strimmer broke when hitting the base of one of the tree stumps. But luckily, this didn't happen until after he was able to cut back all of the other weeds that needed trimmed on our land. Got a little crazy back here. This was our picnic area. Little did we know that after all that dryness throughout the summer, that we would just have green abundance at this time of year. So it feels like springtime out here, even though winter is approaching. It's been abundant with sunshine the last week. We had a lot of rain about a month ago, and I mean, the plants are growing, the weeds are growing. I just really look forward to tidying up this place.
one terrace cleaned up. Four more to go. Looks great, doesn't it, guys? Right now, I'm actually using the string line. I'm gonna throw on the blade a little bit later, but the string's pretty great because I can hit all the things on the walls and not damage the rocks themselves or take big chunks or pieces out. Like here, if I was to use the blade on this, it would just be like leaving all kinds of gashes on our beautiful wall. So cool. Oh, it's some chilly water. This walkway right here has become a bit of a problem every time we've wanted to go up and down it. He's got to go right there on to the next terrace. So while I was cutting there, I had some thoughts and some reflection and I wanted to share them. I think it's so great when kids get responsibilities like having little jobs or things that allow them to take on responsibility and earn money for themselves. Uh, I had a special experience. My parents had the idea. My dad said, how about we buy you a Sears riding lawnmower? We had an acre and a half of a yard in the Midwest, but you have to pay me back by mowing our yard at a very discounted rate, as well as going around the neighborhood and getting jobs from other people in the neighborhood so that you can pay me back like the bank loaning money. It wasn't just like, hey, here's $1,400. No, prove yourself a little bit. Like seven, eight times I had to mow this whole acre and a half with a little crappy push mower. And then eventually when I got that riding lawnmower, I was like, this is luxury, this is the best. Throughout about a summer and a half, I was able to pay back the money for that Sears riding lawnmower. And it just was really special that the years after I could go out and make money for myself because I had, this machine, this asset that allowed me to do that. Our yard, we had a dog. So I had to pick up the dog poop and I had to weed whack, of course. So it wasn't just like ride the lawnmower, you're done. If you didn't do it, you don't get credit. You don't get money back towards your loan that you have. I was very incentivized in a way that taught me responsibility, taught me things that I apply now to life in many ways. And I think as parents, I mean, Brittany and I aren't parents, but if you do have kids, if there's any way to think about this concept, whether it's lawn mowing or some other task around the house, maybe you can help them out and teach them those things early in life. Having this experience again takes me back to that, and I just think there's something really special about that. I'll leave you with that. Now back to cutting. And just like that, it's clear. One more thing I wanna to add to that last thing I was talking about is hard work cannot be replaced by anything else. Hard work's what got Brittany and I to this place. And so when people think, oh, you guys are successful YouTubers, it didn't come because we didn't put in the hard work. We did the hard work in small things years ago. In the long run, this is what we became by doing the hard work in those small things. So I think when people give up so easily in the beginning because they look on social media and see people doing really cool, successful things, they don't see the entire backstory. And today, this is hard work. But you know what? It's all about changing the perspective and mind state. It's not that we have to do this, not that I have to be streaming and cleaning the lawn. We get to do this. We get to be in this beautiful place. It feels like we live in a national park. We got a stream next to us. We got a moino. We live outdoors. We got three beautiful cats. We put in the hard work. We get to do this. I just, I think it's so important. Right now we've got Nelson cutting a new spot for the new cat house. Slice of tarte de laranja. It's one of our favorites and Nelson's too. I've been working hard today, guys. <laughs>
Time for you to shower. At least you know it'll be hot. Brass clippings and everything in my hair. Get your dirty hands in there. I'm gonna go into my changing booth like underdog and come out with my cape on. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Drew's loving these extra long pain chocolat or chocolate croissants here. It's like the grande. It is. <laughs> like a baguette <laughs> man that's good oh and while drew finishes his croissant more exciting news we have a heater that's a lifeline yeah it says it's 90 degrees in here <laughs> but that's purely because it's up at the roof if we could do it right i'd cut a hole in the bottom of the van have the heat coming down by our feet oh, i know so it's like i need slippers on still but like from here's perfect temperature up here's hot <laughs> it's true we got multiple microclimates within our camper right now. <laughs> Another lifeline of ours that helps make our lives here on our off-grid homestead not only easier but possible are solar power generators like the one made by the sponsor of today's episode, Vito Man. Flash speed, 1500. Pew, pew, pew. Pew. And even has a flashlight. Boo, boo, boo. Wow. Whoa, oh. SOS, <laughs> disco. <laughs> really just started raining. <laughs> but the Vito Man's Flash Speed 1500 can recharge in under an hour. We have never had a power station that recharges so fast. And it can do so using a 1500 watt AC input. You can also recharge it with a 400 watt solar input and a 200 watt DC input. So you can charge it in your car when you take it camping. This is where everything is stored because the container is not yet ready for it all. But, oh dear, we need an extra hand. It is pouring. Hope our camper is safe up there. Did we leave anything open? Oh, just the roof hatch and the front doors. <laughs> and I mean, we put the laundry out. <laughs> our but heater. the truck windows are open. Oh! <laughs> This is a 220 watt Vito Man solar power, solar panel. And right here, the cord winds all the way around. Wow. So nice and organized. I love little design tricks like that. And this is the 400 watt solar panel. 400 watts. Whoa. Wow. This thing is big. We just need sun. And it even well, has grommets so you could hook it down on top of your camper. You know what I see out there? Rain. This weather is crazy. Unpredictable. Oh, it just literally hit 100% in this exact moment now. We like to leave these on as long as possible, but we got to remove that sticker. Yeah, I do love the crispiness, but Me too. I like the sound of removing it even better. Ooh, baby. Oh, that's nice. This is how we hook up our heater to our Vito Man. You can see our silver duct there coming out of the window. He's hooking up our extension cord. I need you on the other side of the camper. Ooh, you're gonna lasso it. Oh, here comes Minu. Oh, Minu. <laughs> Minu. Minu. Hi. You're in the way. Hi, kitty. Ready? Oh, cat's out. I think so. All right. She didn't even flinch. <laughs> One cord. There we go. Start heating. Good girl. You like the Vito Man too? See, it's so silent. It doesn't even phase her. <laughs> and they don't just use your typical lithium ion batteries. They use lithium iron phosphate rechargeable battery technology. Plus, I don't know if you guys saw here on the front, the Flash Speed 1500 even has a spot for you to be able to jumpstart your car. Or your van. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. You can connect it direct to your batteries as well. And check this out. It even has a secret compartment. For cookies? <laughs> For cookies and cables. And right now, if you click on the link below, you will get up to 53% off of your Vito Man purchase and get a free mini power bank and car vacuum cleaner, which that's a pretty amazing free gift. So what we're doing behind me right now is leveling out a spot on Terrace 
six, we just decided to add an extra because there were a lot of rocks that rolled down from the curve we built back months ago. They just went tumbling and rolling down right onto the top of the land. And so we determined there's a little bit of a ledge up here. We put all the rocks up there, buried over with the topsoil above it and create another terrace that we can plant some flowers and do something special on later. I just love how much we can just clean everything up. When he's here, it just goes so fast. So you see all the rocks right there he's gathered that came down this slope. He's then setting them up here and building that new platform. Look how nice this ramp looks. Beautiful. How good this looks. Can you spot our newly laid terrace six right here? So you guys remember how I was working on the little cat house in the last episode? Well, Drew, can't get this to stay. <laughs> Just went for a quick run to town. And there goes Tom. Climbing up on top of the catio. Maybe we make a little base before we put some of the bricks down. Build your house upon the rock. Look at this. He even made a little ramp here so the kitties can get up to the cat shack. You see the house? You see that? There's a treat in there. Go on. That's for you. That's for you, baby. Yeah. It's for you. Go on. Nope. Okay. Under the trailer instead. Will you be the first one in the house? Does she know there's a welcome treat? <laughs> there's a treat. You're so close. Well, we were close. <laughs> Minu loves the pony leg, food. the pony lift. What is she doing, her little? A lot of you are asking if she's pregnant. No, she has been neutered. All of our cats have been spayed have been and neutered. neutered. Yeah, but she just likes to eat. But Nelson was just explaining to us that the terrace that he just made is good for like shallow plants, not for trees because it's hard compact soil. The other terraces have better soil for trees to grow deep roots. So interesting to learn the different lays of the land. Oh, more booty shot. <laughs> <laughs> you like the food? Minouche. Are you hungry or are you just bored? Huh? Are you bored eating? Or are you happy? <laughs> She's happy eating, I think. <laughs> I'd say all the above. You're all hanging out in the same box. You are happy cats. That's cute. And nobody's in the cat house. Are you ready for the most incredible grass seed spreader? <laughs> pop, pop, pop. You see this backpack blower right here? It's about to have an upgrade. We gotta spread some grass seed around here. So I've got my little extension here. The idea is that is an extra insert onto the long blowing section of this contraption and I need to figure out how to mount this huge funnel into here, clamp it down so it holds, that way I can fill it up with grass seed. Ultimately creating the most powerful grass seed spreader in all the land, which once they sprout and take root, will help hold in the soil on our new Terrace 6 and hopefully help with the weed control on all of our other newly trimmed terraces. Disclaimer, 
I am not a professional Dremel cutter. <laughs> Great. Just like Santa cuts his candy canes. <laughs> Why is Santa cutting his candy canes? Because he's quality control up at the <laughs> North Pole. A little twist here, a little twist there, a little twist here and there and everywhere. Whoa. We're going big. We're going home. We are home. to the people who say why don't you just do that i'd say they're pretty darn right <laughs> so much easier and so much faster <laughs> but it's just not as fun 